and, and, and did it fully obey what you told us to do. We repent for the time we didn't listen to you and totally walked away. We repent for the times we were speaking to us now. And Father, let us hear your voice and listen to the voice of the Spirit in our lives. We give our lives to you. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Praise God. Let us worship. We're here to lift up his holy name today. And I hope you're ready. If you're watching this, if you're here at church. So on this first song, we're going to go around and greet and love on one another. Hug neck, shake hands, give high fives. And then we're going to worship together.
and this is our time to remember specifically what Jesus did for us on the cross. Praise God. And it's exciting. It's exciting. I get excited every time I think about Jesus coming to life in that tomb, defeating death, hell, and the grave. I mean, that is the crux of everything that we believe in. Amen? Amen. Is it that Jesus overcome death, hell, and the grave. Praise God. And as we come together, it's exciting. When you come in those doors, listen, it's not when the saints come dragging in, it's when the saints come marching in. Because we have marching orders every single week on what we're supposed to do. Praise God. So be open. Check your hearts. Check your life. Be open to God in your prayer time. Be open to God in your tithing. Be open to God in, in every single area of your life and don't hold back. And I'm going to tell you something. If you hold back in one area, it affects all the other areas of your life. Amen? And so you want to obey God and do what God says. Amen? Praise God. So look at your neighbor and say, I am obeying God. I am obeying God. This morning, we have uh, our flyers, and Dr. Owens is going to come and, and tell us uh, about our, uh, our outreach next week, and so he'll give you more information. Just want to remind you about Men's uh, Ministry Breakfast. It's going to be September 3rd at Flo's, and then Women's uh, Luncheon is going to be September 3rd at Rodrigo's at 11 a.m. And so just, you know, it's very exciting to come together. If you haven't come to men's, <coughs> women's uh, ministry, I encourage you to come because it's awesome. You come and make friendships and it's a good time in the Lord. Amen? Yeah. Yeah. Amen. All right, Catherine, you ready for tithes and offerings? Are y'all ready for tithes and offerings this yeah. morning? Amen. Thank you. Praise God. No, are y'all ready for tithes and offerings yes. this morning, right? Yes. Praise the Lord. Amen. You know, there's a, a verse in Luke chapter 6, verse 38, says this. Give and it, shall, it will be given to you, good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and run it over. Well, we like this one, don't we? Run it over will be put into your bosom. For with the same measure that you use it, it will be measured back to you. But the thing is... You can't just read that verse. You've got to read some of the verses before that to find out how this happens, right? Yeah. And so uh, one thing that we, that we have to do is we have to understand that giving, like Pastor Brenda said, is a heart issue. And uh, everything we do in God is a heart issue, but giving especially. And so in 1 Corinthians 13, 3, it says this. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, that's a good thing, isn't it? Though I give everything to feed the poor. And though I give my body to be burned, we sang this morning, consume me, Lord. I want to be a sacrifice to you. Though we do that, but have not love, it profits me nothing. It profits me nothing. So there is a profit. There is profit when a believer gives out of love. There's profit in it. You know, it, is that my word? No, that's the word of God says that. There's profit in it. If, what Paul is saying is that, listen, I want to give out of love because when I do, it will be profitable for me when I do this. And I just got through reading that, that, that as we give, it should be given back in Luke chapter 6. So the motive is what? The motive of giving is out of love, not profit. But the benefit of giving out of love is profit. Amen? Amen? So I must check my heart and give out of my love toward God and toward others. Even people I don't like. Even people I don't get along with. Because I'm to love every person, right? Therefore, before I give, I must make the necessary preparations of the heart. Now, let's look at Luke 6, verses 35 through 38. But love your enemies. See, I told you you got to love everybody. But love your enemies. Do good and lend, hoping for nothing in return. And your reward will be great, and you will be sons of the Most High, for he is kind to the unthankful 
and evil. God, in this verse, God is saying, I want to use you to bless those who don't even honor me. I want them to know what it is, that how love works in the, in the kingdom of God, how love works in this world. And I want to use you to do it. Therefore, be merciful, just as your Father also is merciful. Judge not, and you shall not be judged. Condemn not, and you shall not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Here it is. Give, and it will be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be put into your bosom. For with the same measure that you use it, if it's small, it will be measured back to you in a small way. If it's the hard issue and you're giving, like we say today, I want to be a sacrifice, I want to be all consumed by you, God, as Pastor Ben has been preaching on for the last two weeks about putting your focus on God, not on self, right? Therefore, when we give, as God would have us give, it would be measured back to us greatly. But we don't condemn. Even God doesn't condemn us. 
we were already, Jesus didn't come to condemn us. He came to save us because we were already condemned. Amen. So God doesn't condemn. We don't condemn. Fifth thing, I must forgive. And I want to say something. Again, forgiving is not forgetting. If you continue to forgive and forget, they will continue to abuse you. So we have to have boundaries in this. So a lot of people think that, oh, I, you know, they say, you haven't forgiven me because you haven't forgotten. No, I haven't forgotten because there's a boundary now with you. I love you. I forgive you. But there's a boundary with you. That makes sense? And so we want to forgive. Oftentimes I must forgive people who are toxic. That doesn't mean I become their best friends and forget what they've done. Six, and here it is, I must give. There, so it can be given back to me. I must sow so that I can receive a harvest. You don't, you don't, if you don't plant tomatoes, you're not going to get tomato vines. You can't, you can't pray for tomato vines. Unless you put a seed in the ground. Right? right? And so, and when God blesses you, tithe and give on top of that. Amen? Yeah. Amen. Y'all hearing me? Yeah. Listen, this is powerful. Now, why is it? Because it's a matter of the heart. It's, it's a heart issue that we want to give. And if you're not, it's like Pastor Brenda said earlier while we're doing the, the uh, um, communion, that we want to make sure that our hearts are right with God. Listen, every belongs to him. I'm a steward of everything that belongs to him. And if he wants me to give 10%, it's yours. It's not even a question. If he wants me to give above and beyond that, he'll direct me what to do in doing that. And if I disobey him, why should I expect him to? I want him to bless me. I want to be in the blessings, don't you? I want all of God. I don't want part, part of God. Therefore, I got to give all of him. Praise God. So this morning, get your tithes ready. You should, like Pastor Brenda said, you, are, you should already come to church knowing that I'm giving a tithe. God, I've already prayed about offerings. I want to make sure that I give the appropriate offerings. And also, remember there's a D.C. mission trip coming up in, what, two and a half weeks? we got to buy the, uh, the tickets, and we've got $100 towards that. So listen, as the Lord leads you, we, get, we want Pastor Brenda to go and, on behalf of this church, to speak to our representatives in D.C. Amen? Amen? Amen. Well, let's stand, and we're going to say our declaration. So, if you're watching on uh, face, face, face time? Facebook. Facebook, thank you. Um, give, you can text to give, 650-297-2250, or you can uh, go on the website or our app, Word of Life. Uh, Ministries International, or you can come to church here on Magnolia Street in, uh, in Riverside, California. All right? Well, let's begin. Because we are tithers, the windows of heaven are open. The blessing is pouring out. Because we are sowers, we are furnished in abundance for every good work. We receive our perfect assignments with raises and bonuses, contracts and benefits, sales and commissions. We receive settlements, estates, inheritances, interest and income, rebates and returns, checks in the mail, supernatural wealth transfer, scholarships, tuitions paid in full, bills paid off, debts demolished, royalties received and properties acquired. We are getting our buildings, our lands, our houses, our vehicles, our equipment, and our airplanes. God is bringing into our hands seed. Even see so big it is beyond what you can think or imagine. We command our abundant harvest to come. Abundant harvest come to us now. Harvesting angels go get it. Bring it to us right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, we just thank you. We, we, we know that this giving, this offering, this tithe is blessed. And we receive it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And I expect testimonies of, of, uh, of the seed and the harvest that y'all are receiving. Amen? Yes. Amen? Praise God. Praise God. Yes. Come on. Come on. All right. Uh, Dr. Owens? Dr. Owens, you want to come on? Good morning, Word of Life. Good morning, good morning. I just want to share with you. Uh,
so excited that next Saturday we'll be in Edgemont, and we're going to uh, lead a charge on ministering to people in that community with other churches that are in Moreno Valley. And so, word of life, get, get ready. Get your boots on. We're going to go out and minister to some people that are less fortunate than us, and we're going to show them love. Amen? I want to share with you uh, the scriptures that in regards to Christ, when he had died and rose from the grave, he, grave, he commanded us to go. Uh, St. Matthew chapter 28, verse 19 declares, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, always, even to the end of the, the world. I want to let you know that we all are evangelists. Say that with me. We are all... We are all evangelists, evangelists, preaching the good news Amen. of Jesus Christ. Jesus so with that being said, listen, be proactive in your evangelistic walk, being a disciple. You know what, if you have some extra clothes and you know you're not going to never wear those clothes or those shoes, put them in a bag, put them in the back of your car, your trunk, and when you see some homeless person or someone that may be in need, give it to them. Make some sandwiches and, you know, go out and say, hey, listen, if I see some homeless people or see somebody in need, I'm going to give them some sandwiches Amen. and also give them a charge word of life, inviting them to come here. So we're so proud to be a part of word of life if you can come. And those of you that are watching live, come out and join, join us here at 11860 Magnolia Street. Word of life, we are here to serve you. God bless you. Focus on God. When you focus on God, all these blessings shall overtake. 
to take you. I want blessings. Uh, you know the way I look at it is, how many of y'all go to the beach? You like the beach? Well, in Hawaii, the, the water, the, the waves are huge. You know, these waves here, that's six feet, whatever. You, you get 20-foot waves, 30-foot waves in Hawaii. That's an overtaking of you. When you get out of a wave like that, it overtakes you. It picks you up. You are out of control. I want to be out of control with God. Amen. I want to be overtaken by God. Amen? Amen. And blessed shall I be in the city. I live in the city. Blessed shall I be when I'm in the country. Blessed shall be my children. The produce of, of the ground, what I do, the work that I have, shall be blessed. Everything that I do shall be blessed. My basket shall be blessed. My kneading bowl shall be blessed. My food is blessed. Blessed, verse 6, blessed shall you be when you come in, and blessed shall you be when you go out. Do you know that you're always going in and going out of some place? You might as well be blessed when you do it, right? When I go out of my house, in fact, we have we used to have a, a placemat that as I go out, it would say, blessed as you go out. And when I came in, it was written the other way, blessed as I come in. And every time I looked at it, I would say, blessed am I going in. Amen? Because I am blessed. As I in my goings and my comings. The Lord will cause your enemies to rise against you to be defeated before your face. I want to see those enemies be. Now, I'm not talking about people. I'm talking about the devil. I'm talking about the devil trying to do things in my life that shouldn't be happening. I see him defeated every single day in my face, spiritually speaking. They shall come out against you one way, but flee in seven ways. In other words, they're so scared, they don't even know which way they're going. Because they're messing with the wrong Holy Ghost field person. Praise God. The Lord will command. It's a command. God is commanding blessing on us. The Lord will command blessing on you in your storehouses. What is that? That's your bank accounts. Right. That's your bank accounts. How many of us have been so blessed? In our bank accounts. I tell you, I haven't made so much money in my life. And I don't expect to make less. I expect to make more. Why? Because God has commanded blessing on my bank account. Amen. God has, has commanded blessing on my storehouse. Amen? Amen. And there's no fear in that. I, I, I don't fear about going back. I don't fear about loss. Why? Because when God commands something, it shall be done. Amen. And... And in all to which you set your hand. Praise God. Everything you do, God is commanding blessing on. But I gotta love the Lord my God with all my heart, with all my soul, with all my strength. I gotta love my neighbor as myself. I gotta be walking in forgiveness. I gotta I God's gotta be first in my life, in every area of my life. And he will bless you in the land which the Lord your God has given you. Praise God. The Lord will establish you as a holy people to himself. Just as he has sworn to you, he, if you keep the commandments of the Lord, your God, and walk in his ways. Amen. Now, listen, this is still true today. Deuteronomy has not passed away. Right. The difference is, is that Jesus met the requirements for us to receive it. And so now it's no longer an if we do something. It's as we accept Jesus Christ's commandment of blessing is upon us. Because we have given our lives to Jesus. Jesus has fulfilled the law for us. Jesus has fulfilled the commandments. Now, we just love and obey by the power of the Holy Ghost. We don't have to do it by ourselves. But by the power of God, we obey our Lord and Savior. Praise God. Amen. Y'all should read that uh, through 14. Now, I would also read uh, Deuteronomy beginning in 15 because it starts talking about if you don't, this is what's going to happen. You won't be blessed. Your children won't be blessed. Your storehouse won't be blessed. So there is a cause and effect of the reverse. If I don't honor God, if I don't obey his commandments of love, then blessing will not overtake me. My enemies will not be defeated. Amen. We're not going to do that. We need to read uh, Deuteronomy 28, 15 and on. Why? Because we need to know what we don't want to happen in our lives. Amen. And I praise God. See, I, I can read Deuteronomy beginning in 15, 28, 15, and I go, thank God that ain't me. Amen. Thank God that's not me. Yeah. Amen. Amen. So we have, as believers, we have rights in the kingdom 
of God. Just like citizens of the U.S., we have rights. They're trying to take them, but they're not going to get them. We have rights. In the kingdom of God, we have rights. We are members of the family of God. Let that sink in. You are a member of God's family. You are co-heir with the Son of God, Jesus, and you have now become sons of of God, that includes women, daughters of God, sons of God. You have the same equal share that Jesus has. Jesus has given you everything he has, has given me everything that I have. And I tell you, there's I'm still discovering some of those things. So we have but one thing that we have a right to is a right to free will. Amen. I can choose Deuteronomy 15 and honor. I can choose Deuteronomy 28, 1 through 14. That's up to me. He's given me a right to have free will. In Deuteronomy 30, 19, it says this. This is God speaking. I call heaven and earth as witnesses today against you that I have set before you life and, life and death, blessing and cursing. And he says, because you have free will, therefore, here's the secret. Here's the answer to the question. I'm giving you the key. Therefore, choose life. Amen. Choose life. He not only gives us the test, he gives us the answers to the test. Choose life that both you and your descendants may live. May live. I want my descendants. I want to live. I want my descendants to live. You and I have the right to choose life or death, blessing or cursing. I choose life. Amen. Say that. I choose life. I choose life. I choose blessing. Amen. It now it comes with responsibility. See, free will it comes with responsibility. Amen. See, that's why that's why I I, I I am ultra free will. I believe that I am responsible for most of the things that happen in my life. Not I, if I submit to God, He helps me. But if things negative, especially if things that are negative happen in my life, I don't blame God because he doesn't do anything bad. I don't blame the devil because he's under my feet. If the devil made me do it, then I chose to do it. He didn't make me do anything. I hope, see, free will comes with accountability and responsibility. So if I say I want the blessing of God, that means I'm going to do what God tells me to do to receive the blessing of God. I'm not going to hold back anything. Because I want all the blessing. How many of y'all want all the blessing? Or do you just want part of the blessing? I just want blessing going out. But I don't care about blessing going No, I want blessing in and out. Right? I want blessing. Therefore, i got to give everything back. Listen, it's a good deal. Because God has given me everything that he has. He has everything. And all he asks is that I give him everything that I have, which is poquito. I have very little. Yeah, it's everything I got. It's all of it, right? Every, it's everything I got. But what a trade. Right. What a trade. I give him everything, and he gives me everything. Praise God. I like that deal. God desires that you choose life and blessing. In fact, it's his will. It's God's will that you choose life. God never wanted you to choose death. God never wanted anyone in the world to ever die. That was never his will. He created human beings in the garden to live forever. Right. But we chose, because we have free will, to sin against our Father, mm -hmm. to get against our God. So again, I say, if there is death and destruction in my life, it's not God's doing, because God is the God of life and love. I check myself first. Every time something bad happens in my life, remember, I'm free will. I'm free will. Every time something bad happens in my life, the first thing I look at is me. Me. Did I miss it? Did I miss God? Did I not? Did I make a decision based on what I thought was right? And it may have been a good decision, but it wasn't the God decision. And that's why I'm in the situation I'm in right now. I start looking at it, looking at it. And, and sometimes, so often, I would even say, I didn't do anything. So the second thing I check is that devil, he don't like me. And he's he's using people to come against me. Because they have a free will too. Right? right. God may have promised me this job at a certain place, but there's a person there that has to hire me that has free will. And they can disobey God. So I don't blame God for not getting a job. I blame 
that person for not listening to God. Well, they're maybe not saved. So you know what God says? Don't worry, I got another one. I'm looking to and fro, finding out who I can show myself strong through, that I may bless you. I will find you the job. I will find you whatever it is you're asking for. I will. Hey, listen, I said yes. God never says no to a prayer that's the will of God. If it's in the word and it's God's will, it's yes and amen. amen. What does the word amen mean? So be it. Yes, and it shall be in your life. And so if, it, if, if this person says no, well, he'll find ten others that might say yes. I expect God to give me choices. Okay, here's three jobs. I found three people that will say yes. Here's three. Pick one. What a blessing. What a problem, right? Listen, if we listen to the wisdom of the Holy Spirit, if I would listen to the wisdom of the Holy Spirit, I would spare myself so many consequences. Due to my misinformation. Due to, I'll, I'll tell you what it is. I'll just get down to it. It's my pride. Because I think I can make, this is a simple one. God, I got this. I got this decision. Don't worry about it. It's simple. It's simple. No, everything I take to God. Everything yeah. Yeah. I take to God. There's nothing too small. So I listen to the Holy Spirit. And then I get it. Tries on my, sometimes I might miss it. You know, we do the best we can, right? That's right. I don't want to talk about this in a minute. We practice righteousness. But that means we're practicing. That means sometimes I miss it. I mean, I, I am trying to hear God's will and word in my life, but sometimes I miss it. I'm practicing. And there's no condemnation in that. There's, I mean, I'm doing the best. I really am doing the best I can. I really am listening. I, that's not an excuse. I just know that, hey, I thought I heard what God wanted me to do. Maybe I missed it a little. I mean, there's sometimes where I, Pastor Brenda's telling me stuff, and I don't always hear everything that she tells me, and I miss it, right? Sometimes, right? Don't I mean, don't we do that in marriage and relationships? We, we think we hear everything, but sometimes we miss it, right? It's not because we intentionally Missed it. It's just um, we're practicing our righteousness. It's all a process of learning to hear from God and doing what He leads me to do. Listen, I'm going to do this. I, I hope I want to live to be 120. I hope, and that's an earnest expectation. I expect to live well into my hundreds. 120. During that process, I'm practicing. Learning to listen to God even when I'm 119 and a half. I'm going to be listening, practicing, listening to God. Hopefully I'm better. I'm better now than I was. I hope to be better in the future than I am now. First John 3.10 says this. In this the children of God and the children of the devil are manifest. Whoever does not practice righteousness is not of God. But notice he said practice righteousness. He didn't say those who are are not righteous. He said, who does not practice righteousness? So I can practice righteousness or I can practice wickedness, unrighteousness. Well, I'm not practicing that. I'm practicing righteousness. I wake up in the morning. I want to please God. I want to be righteous before God. I am righteous, but I want to practice that righteousness in my life because it's a hard issue. What am I practicing? What am I practicing all the time? What am I practicing not just on Sunday morning, but on Tuesday afternoon. What am I practicing Thursday night? Now, what am I practicing? Second, uh, well, I already said this. Sec the second thing I look at is, is it a spiritual attack because I'm choosing life and blessing? You know, Satan does not like it when you practice righteousness. He doesn't like it. So today, I want to talk to you about the right to be free. You're, you have the right God has given you the right, the Christian, the believer, the saved, the right to be free. John 8, 31 through 36 says this. Then Jesus said to those Jews who believed him, if you abide, and the word abide means live, if you live in my word, and that comes back to focusing God. If you will focus on my word, you are my disciples indeed. In other words, you do what my word says. I am, I am disciplining you through my word. 
And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. And they answered him, and said, We are Abraham's descendants, and have never been under, and have never been in bondage to anyone. How can you say you will be made free? And verse 34 says this. Jesus answered and said, Most assuredly I say to you, whoever commits sin is a slave of sin. Right? It's a hard issue. Therefore, if the Son makes you free, you are free indeed. Do you know that Jesus has made you free from the consequences, from the slavery, from the bondage of sin and death? You are you are have been set free from the from not having the choice of not sinning. I'm going to say that again. Let me see if I can say it better. Before you were saved, you didn't have a choice to not sin. Everything you did was a sin. Everything. Everything you did, everything I did was a sin. Before I met Jesus Christ, everything I did was a sin. Why? Because it wasn't in obedience to God. I wasn't submitted to God. So I had no choice but to sin. The only other choice I had was to submit to God, and then I would become righteous and practice righteousness. Now I have a choice to sin or not to sin. But sin doesn't have a hold on me, so now I can choose not to sin. Amen? So I have a choice. I'm free. I've been made free. I'm no longer under the bondages, under the slavery of sin. I've been set free. And the word of God says this, which is the truth of God, tells me what I am free from. What am I free from? Romans 8, 1 through 2. This was a big one for me. This was, in fact, my first couple of years of being saved. It was these two verses in Romans chapter 8 that I looked to all the time because I was felt I, I felt condemned. I felt guilty, even though I wasn't. Do you know we don't walk by how we feel? Right. What do we walk by? Faith. faith. We walk by faith. And I was learning how to walk by faith, but I was, walk, I was walking by my senses, by my feelings. I was walking by those things. And, then, and it says, there is therefore now no condemnation in those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. Now remember, that word walk means I live my life. I practice out. I no longer practice living according to my sensual desires, but I now practice living according to the word of God, the spiritual things of God. And there's no condemnation now in that. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. I am no longer under the law of sin and death. Amen. I've been set free. Praise God. Amen? Amen. So because we live according to the spirit of God and not the desires of our own flesh. Now listen, I, I, that immediately comes really, you know, when you think of desires. I'm talking any desire of the flesh. Like I want to make the decisions I want to make. That's a desire of the flesh. Doing what I want to do, being self-centered, being prideful, these are desires of the flesh. Yeah. Not doing what God wants us to do. Is thinking I know more than God. I've heard Pastor Brenda say this often. God's been doing what he does for a long time. He knows more than we do. Right. right? We are not God. Right. And because we live according to the Spirit of God and not the desires of our own flesh, we have been made free from living under the bondage of sin and death. See, sin leads to death, but we are no longer under that bondage. Amen. Praise God. I now have a choice not to sin. I'm responsible. I have free will. I'm responsible. If I sin, it's my fault. Right. My fault. Right. Therefore, I ask God to forgive me. Before Christ condemned sin in the flesh, I was a slave to sin. When you're a slave, you got to do what the, the owner says. And the owner being the devil, being, being sin, I had to do what, because I had no choice. I wasn't made free. Now I've been made free. But now, now that the spirit of him who has raised Jesus from the dead lives in us, we are free to set our minds on the spirit of righteousness. We are free to focus on God and not on self. And live according to the spirit. And not according to Amen? Amen? That's powerful. But remember, with free will, with choice, comes responsibility right. and accountability. We have also been set free from being condemned. How often, 
I'm saved. I ask God to forgive me, and I still feel condemned. I used to think, okay, I'm so glad I sinned on Tuesday, so that by, this is a thought that Ross had, that by the time Sunday comes around, I won't feel so condemned about it. Now that's, that's silliness, right? Because I would spend days in just condemning myself for, for whatever it was that I offended God with. But there is now no condemnation to those who are in. I had to get this revelation. I am not ever condemned when I walk in submission to God. When I ask God to forgive me, no longer guilt, no longer shame, no longer condemnation. Right then. So when I was a new believer, I, I thought that when I sinned, that I would have to condemn myself for a while. Beat myself up. I know I'm probably the only one that ever did that. Well, that's not scriptural. It, right. In fact... Because it's not scriptural, it's my own stuff. It's pride right. is what it is. It's self. It's flesh. First right. John 1, 9 says, if I confess my sin, he is faithful and just to forgive me of my sin and cleanse me from all righteousness in three days. No. no. Immediately. Right. Immediately. The moment I go to Jesus and I say, Jesus, I have offended you. I have sinned against you and your word. I have sinned against the Father. I have sinned against the Holy Spirit. Forgive me. Forgive me. And he doesn't stop there. He says, not only will I forgive you, I make you righteous. There is no unrighteousness in you now. You are perfect to me. You are, at, you are as my son Jesus is perfect because he, took, he right. bore all your sin. Right. He took all your sin. He gave you all his righteousness. For he who knew no sin, 2 Corinthians 5, 21, he who knew no sin became sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. And the moment I ask for forgiveness, immediately I am forgiven. Immediately all condemnation and guilt and shame leave me. Immediately I am made righteous in him. Immediately. I don't have to take another step, another thought about that sin. Now what I do now is I say, God, show me how not to continue doing that. Give me wisdom. That's right? Because right? I don't want to sin against you again. That's right. And, and he, guess what? He does. Amen. So when I confess my sin, I am immediately forgiven and immediately cleansed of all unrighteousness. Therefore, I'm fully forgiven. I'm fully righteous. I'm fully forgiven. And I'm fully righteous. Amen. There is never a need for me to wallow in condemnation. Never. Not for any period of time. Because Jesus has set me free from the condemnation of sin. It is my desire. And I know it's yours. It is my desire as a disciple of the word of truth. God's word. To live a righteous life. Isn't that what we're trying to do? I mean, I don't, I don't believe anyone here is trying to get away with sin. Is trying to live a faith life in him. Uh, for first of all, you can't. God knows. <laughs> God sees. <laughs> you can't fool God, right? Says God is not mocked. And you can't deceive him. Don't be deceived. God is not mocked. Uh, you can't do that. But it is our desire that we please our Heavenly Father. Aren't we doing that every day? Don't we wake up every day and think, when we think of God, don't we think we want to please him? Well, that's practicing righteousness. Amen. And that's what we're doing. I'm not trying to figure out ways to sin and get away with it. I'm not practicing sin. Even if I sin, I'm not practicing sin. You know, when you practice something, you get better at it. Right. I used to practice sin. I was pretty good at it in the day. Now I'm getting good at righteousness. That's right. right? I'm practicing righteousness. I'm getting better at righteousness. I'm not practicing sin. 1 John 3, 7 says this. Little children, let no one deceive you. He who practices righteousness is righteous. Not partially righteous. Not a little righteous. It doesn't, if you're practicing righteousness, God says you're righteous. Just as he is righteous. You're not less righteous than God. At, listen to this. At this moment, little children, let no one deceive you. He, he who practices righteousness, that's me, I'm practicing righteousness. I'm righteous just as God is righteous. That's pretty righteous. You don't 
get any more righteous than that. So how do I become free? Well, according to according to what we just read, live according to the word of life. Or as Pastor Brenda has been preaching on the last two weeks and, and even longer, focus on God. Because when you focus on God, you will be hearing God, you will be seeing God, you will be listening to God, you will be walking according to God, and you He will maneuver you where you need to go. Amen. Amen. Be a disciple of His Word. In other words, know the will of God. I have to know God's will. And I tell you, I haven't learned it all yet. I'm still looking at the Word of God and, and trying to find out what is His will for my life. And you know, as I grow older, the will becomes, it doesn't change, it refines. It gets more direct as we get older. And I'm only halfway there. The third thing is I will know the truth and the truth will make me free. Amen. I will know the truth. God is true. Jesus is true. The word of God is true. The fact that I'm free, God has made me free, that's true. That I'm no longer condemned, that's true. I have been made different. 2 Corinthians 5.17 says this, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. That's true. That's true. Don't let anyone beat you up about who you used to be. Amen. Because you ain't that person anymore. You've been made a new creation. Even a year ago, you're not the same. You better not be. Because we go for what? Glory to glory. We change. We move. We change. I'm a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Because I have accepted Jesus as my Lord and Savior, I have been made a new creation in Him. I have been made free from the guilt of the old person. I am free from guilt Thank and shame. Amen? Amen. 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 Thank you, you know, as the uh, the last thing God told you to do. I mean, sometimes we're waiting for God to do something, and he says, I already gave you direction. Right. Have you done that? Right. We don't need to do something else yet. Do that. So ask God what he wants you to do. God, have I forgotten something? Have I started on something else because I thought it was the right thing to do, but it wasn't the God thing to do. Lord, you told me to do something. I'm going to do it. Focus on Jesus. Focus on the Word. Get His mind. This is your right to have the mind of Christ. Thank you.
just like Peter when when Jesus came to him and Jesus was washing the feet of the disciples and he came to Peter and he said Lord you will not wash my feet and the Lord looked up to him and said if you do not allow me to wash your feet you'll have no part of me and then Peter looked at him and said don't just wash my feet wash all of me amen I want to be washed Every single part, not just my feet, Lord, wash all of us. You have everything in my life. There is nothing that I can withhold from you today. And if you need prayer, just come. We'll agree with you in prayer. And God is so good. But we take authority over resistance in our life. We don't want to resist the Holy Spirit, but we want to listen. says my sheep hear my voice. Now here's the difference. You may not like what God is telling you. You may not like it. There's plenty of times God has told me stuff that I did not like. I did not want to happen. I did not like that. I did not. But what is it? Again, he's not trying to take something. Father, and her teachers and the, and the students. 
your school? Hallelujah. Will you keep praying for us? Sure.